Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. So what we have on the bench is some patio bolts and we're just doing a quick comparison. So at the moment here we have this new patio bolt which is the Carbine HT patio bolt and we're comparing it against the, the Abus and the Widco and seeing what the differences between these all are. Let's take this out of the bag so we can get a bit of an idea. Okay, so there's, sorry, let's do it this way. Lockwood 680, Abus, uh, PB92 patio bolt, uh, Carbine HD patio bolt, and the Widco patio bolt. Sorry, I don't know part number. Now, all of these can take a five pin key. So that's quite a good thing if you're keying up a house and you'd like everything keyed like. Less keys as were before. In the olden days, we used to use patio bolts like this, which have a little wafer type lock and take a little, little tiny five cut key. Um, they're okay, but there's been some improvements with the patio bolt since then. Like if you take this Wico patio bolt, for example, the key is improved so that it can be actually on a five pin key. So you can use the same key as your front door. Uh, the actual fitting of this one here as well, if you look at it, you're actually screwing straight through the lock. These were never bad to work with. Uh, it just meant that the customers always have, have to have two keys, one for the, the big doors and one for the window doors and sliding doors. Uh, they were okay, they fit quite well. You know, there's not a lot to report about them. They, they were just cheap and a standard patio bolt in the industry for quite some years. During that time, there was also the 680. 680 has been around for quite a long time. Look, it wasn't the most friendliest of patio bolts. Um, a lot of the time they did fit the keeper and sometimes the keep, keeper went off skew and a lot of the time too, after not using them, they got a bit hard and crusty and a bit hard to, with the handle, with the knurl bolt that you had to remove. Not only that, they were held on by one-way screws which were right down uh, through the lock. So you can see that, like uh, I guess it's like a six mil, sorry, eight mil hole there. The screws are right down the bottom and if you're removing one-way screws, they were quite a nightmare. And also the cylinders themselves had very short, um, very short cylinder housings uh, so there wasn't much room for top pins which made them quite difficult to pick so if you came up against one of these on the field you would say to yourself oh it's going to be 20 minutes to get it off and get it rekeyed so since then there's been some improvements um, this one here we're looking at is the abus one look they're not too bad it's a bit tight to get the bolt in like i'm really needing to pull that this is concealed fixing as well um, it's got this little plastic thing here which retains the bolt, so if I pull it all the way up, I've actually got to push that in before I can get the bolt out. And then of course you've got these caps right here which um, go around the actual bolt to hold in to give you that concealed fixing. So they just slot in right there and you've got your hole underneath. So look, they're okay. They're um, a pin tumbler um, cylinder as well, so you could rekey it with your standard uh, 0 to 9 pins and use your standard you know, C4 key. So they're quite usable I would say. They also come with a packer as well giving you extra room on the back if you want to do that six pin key and the packer is quite good sometimes when you want to jump over that curb. So that's that one there but the only thing is about the, the price you know all these patio bolts gone up and up and up in price lately. All right let's look at the other Widco. Uh, this was you know kind of the same sort of thing um, with the... Where's, where's, where's my key? With this one here once again it's, it's not... it's not you know, like super, super strong, but it will do the job for sliding, sliding aluminium glass doors. That's generally what they use for patio bolts or windows. So you just unlock it by doing a 180 and then you could pull the bolt up. You're not able to actually lock the bolt in the open position. Uh, same with this one as well. Um, with removing the bolt, you twist the bolt and you can pull it out. So the way this works is it's got a little spring in there and where's that little spring? Sorry, it's the plastic that held it in to actually do that. With the older ones, it was a piece of spring which always used to get jammed. So uh, that, that holding of the bolt a lot of the time over the years actually wore out. This particular type of patio bolt, once again, it is concealed fixing, so it's not so bad. The bolt is in the position in front. So even if you were to pull off the plastic cover, you're not going to be able to get to the be able to get to the screws. This little plastic cover here too, yeah, it works. But after a while of pulling it off, it can get a little bit bent or skewed or lose one of its little clips to hold it down. This also takes uh, like a, what is it, a three pin key here. They also do put the number on the back so it's a little bit easier for the rig keying. You can use a five pin key. They also give you a packer on the back which you have to use and you also have to knock out this little triangle here to start using a five pin key. So you can rekey this to the house as well. So all these three um, you can rekey to the house. Uh, with these ones here, only really this one here is compatible with um, restricted keying. So if you wanted to do restricted keying on a house or wherever you're doing it on and you're needing to fit patio bolts, most likely you'd have to go for the 680. And they're more expensive, they're not great to fit up, 
but you'd be able to get a cylinder plug for the back of it so you can do restricted keying, restricted keying like this, okay? Um, until now, now we're going to look at the new product. So let's put these aside since we've spoken about them. Now we're looking at the car, uh, Carbine HD. All right, so let's just go through a, a few of the little facts here, okay? So retrofits the Carbine 500, C500, the Lockwood 680. So you can put this in place of this. Uh, Wico patio bolts, so we can put this in place of this. And um, probably a lot of others because it's, it's a fairly sort of common sort of footprint there. Uh, you can actually, it comes with the C4 key, so you've got your standard keyway there, that's no problems. Uh, Rekeyable from the front, which is a large advantage, because with these ones here, we actually have to remove from the door, remove from the door, remove from the door. This one you can rekey without doing that, or make a key, however you want to do it. 9.5mm diameter high tensile bolt right here. One of the differences here is, as well is you see this handle here, they've given you a lot more to hold on to. This um, cone shaped handle which is all part of the one with a nice little rubber cushion seal there too. So it's got a nice feel to it, listen. Nice and solid. And I'll tell you a little bit more about why it sounds so solid in a second. All the mounting screws are all concealed as you can see. There's no covers or nothing that can be pulled off as compared with all these other three. Um, designed for aluminium timber sliding hinge doors, left and right handed, that's fine. Extendable bolts if you want to go down an extra 50 mil, so that's your standard bolt. And in the open position, it actually comes flush there. So basically whatever throw that is, what, 50 mil or so, or 50 or 60 mil there, I think it's 50. If you wanted, you can get an extension so you can actually mount this higher up to be able to jump over weather strips or whatever you've got on your door. Um, you can also get this in K1, K2 or K3. So if you're doing a large premises or a large amount of these, you can get them all on the same key without needing to pull them all apart from factory and rekey them. That can save you a bit of time. I believe some of the patio bolts you can get in um, key alike as well, especially these Wico ones, these local ones. Most likely would be a headache to try and organize key alike. Okay, so big advantage of all of these is that I can just grab a 001 in a cylinder, which we all have sitting on the shelf, who most people have got restricted. Most likely we wouldn't have too many uh, 580 patio bolt cylinders. They're not as common, but 001 cylinders are common. So I can put that in there and then have a restricted key system working on this patio bolt. Another couple of key factors here, which we're gonna look at here is the design of it. It's chunky, it's solid. Um, you could get away with using this just on the front of an aluminium door, perhaps in an office, because it's very similar looking and you know it's reasonable size compared to an ADI bolt. Also, it's front fixing, so it would be a quick, quick little bolt to, to put on. All right, now let's go over some other things. It comes with a packer, it comes with uh, some screws. The screw seems to be a slight gauge, especially the metal threaded self-tapping screws. They seem to be a slight bit bigger than some of the other ones. And I think they've done that deliberately because if you're removing one of these and you want to put this in the same footprint, which you can do, it'd be better to have slightly larger screws. So they've really thought about that as well. They've given us um, a couple of pieces like this, uh, I guess you could say a scutcheon or a strike keeper. They've given us two of them. This is the big triangle one, and the other one's just a flat left and right with um, two little screw holes. So a bit of a dress plate. I'm not a fan of them. I never use them. I think they jam up. But sometimes you might need to use them to make it look like a you know a nice finish. Uh, the packing plate right here. Already you can get a five pin key in there. Where's my five pin key? Where's the five pin key gone? Here we are. Already you can get a five pin key in there without doing any modifications to the back of it. That's a five pin key in there and it can accommodate a six pin key as well. Uh, whether or not you need the packer or not, it looks like you don't because there is enough room with this five pin to actually accommodate the six pin. So if you're rekeying the six pin, of course you'd only use the chambers which are available, but you could do it without any modification. Locking and unlocking is 360. I turn it 360, take my key out. Now, another advantage of this patio bolt here is that you can lock it in the open position. Now, that's extremely important if you're, I don't know, hospital, childcare, schools, anywhere along those lines where you, you need to lock it open because if someone was to lock it, it'd be very inconvenient or very silly. Um, you know, so that hold open position is really cool. To put the key in, turn it 360, plunge it down. I've just locked it and we should be in the locked position. Okay, locked. Now I can key lock it to make it double locking. Push the key all the way in first. Now we can remove it and it's locked. All right, so let's go through the nifty little tricks here that you're all probably wondering and you're probably gonna to say to yourself, okay, so I've come across one on a job. How the heck do I get it off and how the heck do I rekey it? All right, let's go through that because that's important. Also, first of all, that's our packer. You see the packer there, uh, three or four mil, sits on, sits on the back just like so, like that. 
there's enough room there for anything that needs to protrude, such as a restricted key or anything like that. Uh, it's got a self-locating lunk, so you're not going to get like the pack is skewed off on the side because it actually has a little two spots that it locates from. From there you have three different footprints, and the footprints are these ones. So there's the Wico. Um, we can do the this one as well by introducing another hole, and then we have the Abus. The Abus as well, you actually have to introduce another little hole, but on saying that, it's very, very universal by having all those other footprints. So even the old Widco one here too, um, it'll take up those holes too, so you don't need to do any new holes. So if you're basically swapping out old hardware for new hardware, this would be your best bet because it's quick and easy and your holes are already drilled, less holes to drill. All right, so how the heck do you rekey it? Okay, it's on the door. First of all, we need to put in the unlocked position to the bolt and slide. Well, that was the lock. Let's put it in unlocked position. Okay, unlocked. Yes. Okay, we pull the bolt up to its highest point. We come along with a, I've got what is a pick here. You can use a spike tool, but these spike tools seem to be a bit too chunky for it. And then you just come in there and push down. I'm using the right side there. Push down, pull your tool out, and it'll slide out. Okay, so that's the bolt out. From there, you can lift the housing off just like so. Okay, and this is what we're actually fishing for. See this little spring-loaded device right here? This is your bolt retain. It's a, I'll show you what it is. See it in there? This part here, spring-loaded up. So this is actually, the way they've built this in with the spring is a lot more durable, stronger than any of the other sort of patio bolts with their bolt retaining. So obviously that's been some sort of issue in the past and they've really improved it and really engineered it. This is a solid bit of die cast, which is quite chunky, a little bit heavier, but definitely definitely well made. All right, so we've got it to this stage now. We want to do a rekey. We can just pop these two screws out on the front. And we can pull them out. So being able to rekey a lock, a patio bolt especially, always meant that you had to take it off the door. So now we don't have to take it off the door. We don't have to mess around with the fitting of it. We can simply just dismantle it, take our cylinder out, and there it is there. Once again, we can use the Lockwood 001 inner cylinder to put restricted in. And that's something which is not um, friendly with the other ones. I can't do it with the Wico. I can't put restricted in that because that uses discs. I can't do it with the Abus because uh, that has a funny type of cylinder on it. And I can do it with the Lockwood 680. These ones here, don't get me wrong, but does any restricted manufacturer still kind of make plugs for the 680? I don't know, probably not, because they're probably not a hot seller. Okay, so there's our cylinder, we take it out, we do a rekey. As you can see, you've got your standard sort of height there, a little bit more room compared to the Lockwood one, so it should be completely pickable and shouldn't be too much of a drama. Getting it open, rekeying it, pulling it apart, and then we just simply pop, pop it back in. Now for cam orientation, because we all like to pull stuff apart and not take note, there you go, take note. The biggest lunk, or the big part, it goes at the six o'clock, and this other part here touches the 10 or 11 o'clock there, so there you can see it. Okay, so then we just simply slide it back in there. This die cast here is actually milled out here, so when it goes in, it goes in and then slides across, which is a really good design. It means you can't just like, you know, slide hammer or pull it out. It's actually been retained in by half the meat here. So they've designed this quite well. So we push that back in there. We come along with this part here and there's nothing that's gonna fall out here. Basically, it's one big bit of metal with a T-section here with a spring underneath, pushing that, uh, pushing the, the pin retainer. That's pin a oh, bolt retaining system in. So we just pop that back in, come along with our Phillips head screwdriver, and screw them back in. And that's basically rekeying it. That's it. We didn't have to mess around with the pack. We didn't have to hold the pack around the lock back on the door. We didn't have to do any of that. We just did it from the front. So no other lock here can, no other lock here can say they can pull apart from the front. Uh, no other lock here says they're friendly with restricted keying, except for the 680, but the 680 is hard, you know, do they even sell those plugs? I don't know. Uh, the 001 inner, you're definitely gonna have some of them sitting around on your shelf as well. It's gonna friendly with the, friendly with the six pin keys as well, so that's good for commercial. And um, the front housing as well, nice design, no screw holes anywhere. If most people came up against this, they wouldn't know how to pull it apart. So that's why we're just doing this quick little thing. We'll pop that on there like that and just come through with our pin. You, you can reverse this pin, come in from left, come in from the right, and you can reverse this too, so it really doesn't matter. This is all chrome plated here, so it should be quite nice. There's a little bit of a O-ring there just to give it a nice spongy feel. And once again, this top handle here is actually um, 
well, it's got a pin in there by the look of it to keep it all on the one. As where these ones here, after a few years, when the bolt gets stuck and things, a lot of people get vice grips on it, they pull it, and it ends up just being nothing but a, a stubby stump, something like what the Lockwood uh, six, 680s did. See those little knurled things there? Not very good on the fingers. The more that you've got there, the easier it's going to be, especially elderly people, to actually pull it up with. And you hear, just, just listen to the mechanism. Really, um, how do you say, solid clicking sounding, you know, sounds nice. I think you could get away with putting these in a, in a lot of positions where you couldn't get away with putting a patio bolt because they look a bit small and tiny. I think you get away with maybe a few different places for these, you know, locking, locking sheds, locking containers, maybe even a commercial front door you could put this on or an in, inside bolt somewhere. If somebody says they want a quick lock to lock a door, you could simply just pop this on the inside. Um, yeah, nice easy thing. I mean, I, I think back to a couple of evictions where I've had to do evictions and uh, they wanted a lock, but we couldn't even enter the house because it was just, you know, too stinky. So uh, a couple of times, you know, I've ended up putting patio bolts in the front, but I like this patio bolt more because it's more chunky, looks more solid. And this one here, you've got this plastic cover on the front and the other one has the, the, the screws exposed. These ones here, yeah, they're, they're doable as well. Um, listen to the mechanism. That key retain function doesn't sound good. And if you want to compare apples against apples, let's just pull it apart. One, you've got a solid case of aluminium that's all been um, casted. And this one here is more, you've got plates and things going on. So let's have a look. Okay, so the reason you hear that like little scraping um, like spring sound is because this is your retaining parts here. And they're just basically made out of a bit of um, spring steel which is bent up and that's what's capturing those those actual lunks. Uh, with this one here as well, let's take the cylinder out. So you've got that big drive there. This is your cylinder here. So that's a die cast cylinder, unlike the carbine with the brass. There's no way you're gonna get a restricted plug or anything for that. We're working on three pins as we're with the, the carbine, we're working on four. So that's more security there. Bit of a cheap and nasty cylinder if you ask me compared to the brass one you can also uh, flip that up and flip that down uh, that was something you could do there as well i'm pretty sure we could let's check that could we yeah we can we can put the cylinder in the up position or the down position so that way you've got key orientation going the right direction um yeah so comparing apples against apples i think the carbine's a stronger product and i i look at it as a bit more of a media product Meat, meteor, as in it's got more meat on it, not as flying meteor comments comment in the sky. And price wise, uh, it's about the same for a few dollars more. It's also um, made by an Australian manufacturer. You know what? I might even put this part back in here. That would be a good idea. That way it can be used again. Um, yeah, so that's looking at the Carbine HD patio bolt. Up until today, I hadn't seen one. And um, I was given one and said, well, have a look at this and, you know, see what you think. So in all fairness, I see it as a bit more of a superior product. The retrofitting, the key removal from the front, the restricted key systems, the build quality of the amount of meat that they, they've used in the construction and the quality of the parts definitely is definitely is worth, worth the money. As where these patio bolts here, you know, you're paying close to 30 bucks for them. You're already at 30, so if you're at 30, you might as well just go, oh, did I just strip that? No, it was those springs that were clicking in. You might as well go that little bit more and get a decent product. The finish on it as well looks like a powder-coated finish. Um, these ones here, they are powder-coated. They're powder-coated as well, and powder-coated here, but this plastic is not so nice. Yeah. All right, so that's a comment there. That's my uh, rant for the day. Oh, the Avis one looks like it comes with a packer. Uh, this Wico one does come with a packer as well, but they've only got one foot, footprint in the packer, so the multiple footprints that the carbine has is definitely more superior. Leave your comments down below. Tell us what you think about these, and thanks for watching. Oh, sorry, sizes? Sizes. Okay, my verniers are dead today. So in height-wise, with the packer, I've got about 40 mil. Without the packer, I've got about 35 mil. Width on this, I've got 35 mil. Uh, length, of, length of the body, I've got about 85 mil. And uh, with the bolt in, I can only make a rough guesstimate here because my venue is only go up to 150. Okay, we're gonna say about 160. You do have the extended bolts. If you look at this as a comparison, in height-wise, without the packer, 20. 
25, so we'll say 30 with the packer. Width, you're looking about 35 if you talk that section there. Overall length, about 155. So very, very similar, very similar. Abus, 35, 35 width. Uh, protrusion from the door, did we do that? With the packer, 35, probably 30 without the packer. Overall, 155. So same, same. That's the way we could look at them. That's the way we could kind of look at them there. Or we'll line the keyways up. Okay, not a bad patio bolt. It might be handy for you, uh, or you might want to know how to pull it apart, at least you do now. And you might consider them when you're out on a job and looking for something a little bit more media, um, well, a little bit more chunky. Uh, you might consider them in that scenario as well. Or you might just consider using them as a patio bolt because they definitely look like a solid patio bolt. They definitely have a good feel to them. They have more weight to them. So strength-wise, we haven't, you know, there is no strength-wise where we put them through a grueling test to see which one would last the longest. But this, uh, this one here has actually been cycle tested from what I've been told. So, okay, leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching.